I was completely convinced with certainty that I was dying right there and then. You know, I'm often asked, what is that like? Laying there on the battlefield, bleeding out. I'll never forget the thought in my mind was, man, I taught you how to use that gun and you just shot me with it. It took the medevac bird over an hour, somewhere between 60 and 90 minutes to be able to land. I flatlined one time on the way to Fob Shank, which is where the AOB was located. I needed a blood transfusion and I was administered a blood transfusion with the wrong blood type. This is something that I typically don't talk about because to the lay person, this can't happen. And it perhaps paints our medical community in a negative light. I don't agree with that. Um, there is a human element to everything that we do. This is obviously something that was not done intentionally or egregiously. Um, the individuals that were there that were working on me and my friends were doing everything they possibly could to save our lives and I am extremely grateful for all their efforts. Everything inside my body began shutting down. Liver, kidneys, everything. They weren't certain what the problem was, but they were certain that I needed a higher level of medical care. So they put me on a flight to Bagram. I coded on that flight as well. And it was on the flight there that they realized what had happened with the blood. So they reach out to the hospital that's about to receive me and they said, hey man, we just pumped this guy full of the wrong blood type. Be prepared to receive the body. They got me right into surgery, um, immediately took off the lower half of my right leg to try to minimize the amount of damage that my body was trying to recover from. They put me on dialysis, they put me on another transfusion of the correct blood type. And um, I managed to survive. So about once every other day, I was in surgery and they were just incrementally cutting above the infection, cramming me full of antibiotics and trying to get the infection under control. And they just gradually just kept going up higher and higher and higher. Eventually they got to a point where they got ahead of the infection and it, and it stopped. Leaving with what I have today. So my femur is about four inches in length, which is obviously not very long. And when you're six five, six foot six, mechanically that becomes a challenge moving forward. So then I get into my initial recovery, building up my strength, getting a prosthetic, learning how to live life as an amputee kind of thing. I spent a year at Walter Reed going through that. Leave there, return back to Fort Bragg, back to my unit. And um, was offered a full medical military re retirement, which I wanted nothing to do with. So I said no to that. My command said, okay, what, uh, what, are, what are your goals? And I said, well, I need a job here, first of all but my goal is to return to my team. And they were supportive of that. I requested to be assigned on the combatives committee within the advanced skills company of third group responsible for teaching special forces, soldiers, hand-to-hand -hand combat, and close quarters combat. So I'm instructing daily, teaching classes and whatnot, and then I'm also now working with the Thor 3 strength and conditioning coaches on more advanced recovery. I approached my training at this point like, a, like an insane person. Um, 
it consumed me completely. I was first thing in the morning, mobility training, flexibility, range of motion stuff. From there to the gym, strength training. From there to work, teaching classes. Train at lunch. Usually we train jiu-jitsu to keep our, our, our own internal skills sharp. So I did that for about eight months. And at that point, I felt like I was ready to take a shot at getting back onto the table. There really wasn't a, a laid out pipeline for me to follow. The command was just doing what they felt was right to ensure that I was able to physically, mentally, be able to get back onto a team. So that process went on for about three months of a variety of different assessments and tests. And at the completion of my last physical assessment, the third group command team felt comfortable with putting me back on operational status. So I get back on the team. This now is mid 2015. So from the point of injury to the point of me returning to the team was right around two years, which in the world of amputees is still really early on in that process. And I was still trying to figure out how to live life just as a one-legged guy. Forget about trying to figure that out in Afghanistan. So I get back to the team and about two months later, we were back in Afghanistan, August of 2015. Uh, run in combat operations. Deployed once again to Eastern Africa in the Horn of Africa region. At that point, I transferred groups from third group to fifth group. I joined fifth group July of 2017, and then I deployed with fifth group to Lebanon. Got back from that, decided I wanted to pursue making the transition to warrant officer which I did, then took over as assistant detachment commander for one of the ODAs within fifth group. If you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. There are certain days where I feel like I'm working. On most days though, I feel privileged to be able to do what I do. Nobody has the right to be in the United States military. Nobody has the right to be a Green Beret on an ODA. You have to earn all of that. It's not handed to anybody. Therefore, it is a privilege to serve in this capacity, in this organization. It is a privilege to serve the members of this nation. And that is something that I pledged an oath to in 2007. And despite this, I still have to uphold my end of that bargain because I can. And as long as I am considered an asset to the guys to my left and right, and as long as I provide value to them, I will continue to do what I do for as long as I can.